We, these days more than ever, are looking at a computer. We're looking at Zoom, we're looking at classes online. It's the best time to do it because we're locked at home. And many people want to work from distance. Here are some of the important things for us to remember. When you start to have a posture with where you're stooped, that's going to be the posture that you will have for years. That means that you'll get arthritis of the neck, lack of blood flow to the head that can cause strokes and other problems, tight chest that can cause heart problems. Here's the simple solution. Open the curtain and look out of the window. Wave your hands to the side. Sometimes close the strong eye and look at the window. When you sit at a computer, make sure that your elbows are dropped and that you look straight at the computer. If you have to get close to the computer, don't bend from your neck, but bend from the hip. So then you can look at the computer and do your work. We have no choice, but we have to do computer work. And once in a while, we have to stand up and relax. So for example, grab your chair, hold your leg, pull it backwards, push the chest forwards. Grab the other leg. Pull it backwards, push the chest forwards. For those of you who cannot pull the legs, simply look at the ceiling and tap on your chest. Doesn't take long, it takes maybe 20 seconds, and it takes away stress that you build up throughout the hours that you're looking at a computer. This wonderful kid who is visually handicapped tends to bend a lot, and it takes a lot of work to get her straight. But you, if you have visual handicap or not, will end up bending just like she does and permanently if you don't fix your neck. Look how we look at a phone. Look at this. Look, what, This person is specifically visually handicapped, so he has to look from near. Other people have to look from far. They don't bend the neck as much, so they don't think anything wrong happened. But if you really look at them, you can see how they create a posture that this person has a more severe posture that eventually means tight neck. If you do your Zoom through your phone, if you do your Zoom and, and courses online through your phone, you are ruining your body. First of all, the screen has to be large. Second of all, you should work on your straight posture. And third of all, you should recognize your periphery. So, at least once every two hours, if not once every hour and a half. Sit on the ball if you can. Now, it's only for you if you can do it. And lie backwards. That is the opposite posture that you have when you look at the computer. Lie backwards until you touch the floor. Then hold your head and bring the chin to your chest. I feel a wonderful pop and then again I bring my arms back and I can move to this side and that side and this side and that side and I slowly get up. But I tell you it is really worth your while. When you walk look a centimeter above you and don't let that computer ruin your posture for life. Don't let that computer ruin your eyes for life. Our job now is to maintain ourselves. So when we do our work on ourselves, we don't start backwards, but we start in a good place. Often we become so rigid after sitting. I wish that we had a mentality of allowance these days with the corona people uh, have to put a mask over the face when they uh, massage each other if they allow themselves to massage each other and we should have much freer way to massage each other without any wrong connotation behind it but i would love it if people in office places would be able to massage each other's shoulders and squeeze the shoulders a bit there's another way to massage yourself you take the two tennis balls, 
and you put it behind your back. And you put them close to the vertebrae, but not on the vertebrae. I want to repeat, not on the vertebrae. Now you can lean against the wall and bring your legs one by one up, like this. And then roll down while the wall balls roll up. Then move your arms in rotating motion and put good pressure on your balls and slowly come here and move the elbows from side to side and slowly come up and the balls are behind you and you bring the legs one by one up. So why is it good to do it? Because you have so much tension on your muscles and if once a day you take away that tension, you're now in a wonderful neutral state where the muscles are not contracted because you are facing the screen all the time. This exercise is only for those who know for sure that they have back, that it can sustain good back. Maybe half of the people cannot do it and the other half can do it. Make sure that you don't have osteoporosis and not severe osteopenia. Talk to your physician. I even trust more yoga instructors or uh, fitness people or good friends of yours who know you well and make sure that you agree with them that your back is in good shape. Sit and then lie down on the broom and the broom is on your vertebrae. Relax, close your eyes, visualize your head is expanding. Feel how all the back is on the broomstick and then Hold your head with your hands and bring your chin to your chest. Then bring the pelvis slightly up and slightly down. This should be done only twice a week and it would really help you take away the ill effects of bending at the computer. Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video we made and I want to introduce my, my great friend, uh, Professor and Dr. Eric Pepper. Uh, and you can take a look at his book. I'll let him describe it, but he's going to respond to all the stress that we have uh, in front of the computer. One thing I want to just tell you all, see this uh, piece of paper, Put this between your eyes sometimes and wave your hands to the side so all the stress of looking at the computer will go away. So I just want to <clears throat> finish this nice presentation before Eric <clears throat> will start to make his. And uh, I just want us all to do, because I know that many of us are uh, vision practitioners, a short session of palming. So interlace your fingers and move your arms in rotating motion in both directions. Then point your hands outwards and move your arms in rotating, in most, uh, rotating motion in both directions. Rub your hands. And I'm using a palming stick because the big thing about this stick is it can go up and down as I wish for it to go up and down. Or sometimes it does what I wish for it to do. But anyway, it goes up and down. And I can sit in a way that doesn't allow my neck to go down or up. In fact, I'll get the correct hole for this. Yeah, doesn't allow my neck to go up or go down. Get yourself a pillow, sit down. Uh, I will play for you some Mozart for five minutes. We'll palm and right there and then I'll say one more thing and then Eric is going to give his lecture about Zoom fatigue. Dad, if you want a shooter and a ball. So breathe deeply and slowly. Put your hands over your eye orbits and listen to Mozart and rest from this computer. That was it. Next, next.
Make sure that you put no pressure on your cheekbones. Focus on your breathing. Inhale to the count of six and exhale to the count of nine. In and out through your nose. I have to be in a bright room, but I hope that you can darken your room when you do this and breathe deeply. Again, no pressure on your cheekbones. Breathe slowly and deeply. Remember to not put pressure on your cheekbones. We can easily forget that. Don't do that.
Slowly take your hands off, and I'm very much ready to hear all that uh, Dr. Eric Pepper is going to teach us. He's written a wonderful book from the looks of it, and I hope that many of you will work with it. Well, thank you, Mayor, for such a generous introduction, and I'm totally honored to be here because for the many years I've known you, I have shamelessly borrowed your concepts and ideas and sometimes forgot to give credit. And even this, so thank you for our friendship and collaboration. Truly, I'm honored. Uh, as you did this practice of palming, I realized for myself, I needed to rearrange my desk. And all I did, I took a stack of books. I guess you can just see it like this, maybe. It depends how, there. And I put them underneath my elbows on the desk to get me the palming kind of stick model. I'm also lucky that I can raise and lower my desk. You know, there are so many pieces that, have, that are involved in developing Zoom fatigue. Vision is the, one of the major obvious ones and it affects the whole system. So what I wanna do is share a few useful tools that may be helpful, which are also described in much more detail and many practices in our book text stress. I think the first is to say we need to account for ergonomics. That means how we are arranged. And May already in his video pointed that out, how to sit. However, many people not just have screens, so many of us are using laptops. And laptops by definition are always a compromise. If I put my hands on the keyboard, I have to raise them a bit especially if the keyboard or the laptop is on the kitchen table. I have to bring my arms up. That increases my shoulder tension. The key is without awareness. Then, because the screen is too low, I have to look down. And when I look down, I get all these problems. Mayor has pointed out already, neck to shoulders. And I would add, in addition, my abdomen can no longer move because I'm being compressed. I'm applying pressure in the abdomen, which also inhibits our gastrointestinal tract, our digestion. It affects cardiac return because the blood flow is more compromised. And finally, as I sit for a long time, I don't use my legs. And I love what Mayer did with the interruptive practices. That's what we need all do. We forget that our calf muscles are often called our second heart. Now, why would it be a second heart? Sounds crazy. Well, the way blood returns to the heart is much more by the squeezing of the veins by the muscles around it, as if the veins are like tubes, blood flow comes in it, the venous return comes in it, and then the muscles around it, when they tighten, they squeeze this tube, pushing the blood back up. When you're just sitting, that doesn't happen. Some of you have experienced a kind of analogy like this when you go walking. And if you walk for a long time, you often get fat finger syndrome, what I call it. There's, you get a kind of swelling in the arms and hands after hiking for a while. And part of that occurs because you didn't squeeze the arms and hands and moved it. The same thing happens in your legs, which puts an extra strain on your heart. So let me go back to the keyboard for a moment first, the mechanics. Remember, even 
if the ergonomics are perfect, it doesn't solve it per se. Let me give an example. I can buy a superb chair, which is just right for me. It doesn't mean I sit in it correctly. All the chair does, all the arrangement will give me the opportunity to sit more correctly. On the other hand, if the arrangement is incorrect, then it's much more difficult and I have to keep compensating time and time again. So let me go back to the laptop. Those of you who are using a laptop, I can only say invest in either one or the following. One, get an external keyboard, which you can plug into the laptop either with Bluetooth or with a cable. And that now means the laptop can be at the level almost of your lap, the keyboard. Then you raise the screen high enough so the eyebrows are at the, about at the top of the screen. That is solution one. Solution two, you use the laptop low at, on, on near your waist and your arms can almost be dropped right down or resting on the table. And then you get an external screen, slightly higher, which is also larger, that will make it easier to look. And I think though that's a very economical piece. And then what Mayer pointed out, we need to take breaks. What is so interesting is I know it myself. I should take a break all the time. However, I tend to be captured by the content of the screen or the work pressure. And if I have children, my children are now too old, but when my son and daughter were younger, especially boys, when they're playing computer games, they are so captured, so involved that when mom or dad says, it's time for dinner, stop, the child will say five minutes and another hour will pass. They're totally captivated by it. They're, they're trapped. And the reason is that our computer displays, our technological displays really activate early survival biological mechanisms. As Mayer has pointed out as well, none of us would have survived in the jungle by just looking at the screen at, at 18 inches. We would naturally look at the far distance, we search, and anytime there's a peripheral movement, our brain is wired to look at that because it could be a foe, friend, danger, a wild animal, food sources, etc. We would need to identify that. And so the, the screen acts just like that. It keeps activating us. So we're totally captured. And it's almost not in our control because you're activating these evolutionary survival mechanisms. In the same way, if you're doing social media and my students and friends do this, they will continually check their cell phone 80, 100 times a day for a message, even if it didn't even vibrate they would automatically reach in, they want to update. Again, it is activating a social mechanism or survival mechanism. If I'm in a small tribe, I need to know where people are. I need to know the power structure because I need to know, I need to know the local gossip to survive. The same way, the cell, that's how the cell phone activates those same processes. Plus, every time it reacts, our brain gives a little positive reinforcement, you know, and we get totally addicted and captured. So you've been sitting now for a moment. The problem is, how do I remember? Ah, well, let me, I cannot trust myself, I found out. Despite all the lessons Mayer has given me, I, I still keep, be, you know, I get up after two hours, even though I know every 20 minutes I should. So what I now do, I have installed a free app on my computer. I highly recommend something like this if you haven't done that. The free app is called Stretch Break. There are many like this. It's called stretchbreak.com. I put the link in earlier in the chat box. I don't know if, or it may have just been to Mayer. It gives the link, no money. And what it does is you can set, make the setting so it pops up automatically every 20 minutes. It will take you through stretches or you do the many great stretches and, 
exercises Mayer has described because some of them are much more useful, but at least you're doing this. Just for a moment, just get up. Just get up for a moment, all of you, get up. Yes, Gloria, even you, get up, everybody. And yes, Rachel, do get up, if possible. And now just reach up for a moment, just play. Look up, look up. You can even clap. Behind, unimportant. And now just sit again. And just check. Did your energy slightly go up? If yes, not your head up and down. Do you feel slightly happier? Just slightly. This is just the pieces Mayer has been encouraging in many different ways. And he has a massive number of great exercises. And in our book, we describe a number of reasons for this. There are many things you can do. The other major piece that happens. That's one that thing I want to say in Eric's book, there are many postures that you can look at, many ways to sit that you can look at. They really put fantastic work on putting all of this together. I really recommend you to work with it. Thank you so much, Mayor. And for those for whom vision is challenging, the book, although there is no auditory book, the book is enabled so it can be done by sound. I just noticed that when I went to Amazon to look at it, it says it's sound enabled or something like that. That probably means it's a computer that reads it to you, which is not so exciting, I know. Uh, but let me keep going for a moment longer. I wanna do a little exercise with each of you, a different one. How many of us work at the computer? So what I like you to do is just imagine if you don't have a mouse or if you do have one, put the mouse you have next to the keyboard. Just put it there or simulate it. Get an object, a pen or, or a little box. And now put your hand over the mouse. Let me instruct the, what to do. In a moment, I'm gonna ask you to draw your street address, each letter with the mouse, except you start the last letter of the street address and go backwards. So if my street address is Derby Street, the, less, the last letter is T. So now I'm gonna take the mouse and I'm gonna draw the letter T. Then after I've drawn the letter T, I click. Then I draw the letter before that, the letter E. Is that clear to all of you? Yes? The instruction is clear? Okay. There's some very, now what I'd like you to do, when you draw this, I want you to make each letter about a half inch or smaller in height, about one centimeter. Okay, so it's a very small movement. I'll let you, are you all ready to start? Start now. Do it as quickly as possible. Don't let the letters be bigger than a half inch. Quicker, quicker. Be sure you click between each one of them, quicker. Don't make a mistake, quicker, enough. How many of you noted that when you did this exercise, you found your shoulders tightening? This means yes. How many noted that you stopped breathing? How many may have even started to tilt slightly more forward? I gotta perform well. And notice we were totally unaware of these somatic changes when we did this practice. This is what we do often unknowingly while we are working at the computer, whether we're working on an Excel file, whether we click and go down the rabbit hole of one hyperlink to another, and we have to move the mouse around. And I can feel it automatically, or I know it. I don't even, I'm unaware of the feeling often, but I intellectually know it. I automatically go, you can see me start to move forward almost when I start doing this intense work. So it's critical to keep that in mind. So remember that most likely we are unaware of the muscle tension. And in our book, we really give some nice physiological recording where you can record the muscle tension. And I think with Mayer, we can easily do that as well together. You can monitor the muscle tension and then the machine would tell you I am tight and I didn't know it. 
I want to shift to one more body position, which Mayer pointed out so well about posture and collapse. When I collapse and I, co and I tighten in here, which so many people now do in their neck, <coughs> it often reduces the blood flow and can lead to significant headaches. Just for a moment, don't do it too long, experience the effect of that posture. So what I'd like you to do is bend slightly forward, like you bring your, your nose to the screen and then really contract down in the back as if you're pulling the head into your shoulders. Just hold, feel that tension when you're doing it. And your chin is up and you keep pull, contract. I think that's enough. I don't want to do it for a long time, please. How many found that it was, you felt a little bit this uncomfortable? Yes? almost all of you, right? Notice I exaggerated what you normally do. It's only by the end of the day that people experience Zoom fatigue. They experience this neck and shoulder discomfort. So the way to solve this, one great exercise for the neck tension, especially for those who are sitting like this the whole day, is you can take a pillow or a big ball. I don't have, I don't have the right pillow here. I have to simulate this. I just made up this exercise right now, I forgot. I could take a pillow, put it underneath my chin. And then as if I am pressing my chin down into the pillow and by that way, I'm extending my neck. And I do this gentle up and down movement, pressing into the pillow, letting the head come back, press into the pillow, letting the head come back. And I can do this five or six times and then relax and think that there's a hook at the back of my head that pulls me up for me to get taller. So for many of us, it means when you're sitting more in the right upright position, as I'm making an attempt to do now, it may almost, for some of us may feel like I'm getting a double chin, <laughs> not what we would like, but, I'm, but it's really this upward direction going way up. And yet when I work, I'm totally unaware that I collapse. I hate to say it. I almost never know. I get, I get involved. I start working because I want to look at the screen more. What we now do is we, some, we I would highly recommend this. I make no money of the following device. This one would cost money. We often use a biofeedback device called a upright go which is a device uh, about an inch and a half long. I can put on my spine at my neck. It works with my cell phone. And then I calibrate it. And then every time I start collapsing, <laughs> it vibrates. So it reminds me, wait a minute, Eric Pepper, sit up. Again, the ideas are described here. Now, why is sitting up so important? One, we should not always sit up. We should always do movement. We sit, we lie down, we move. That is critical. But why do I, I'm totally in agreement with Mayer and his perspective looking upward, going to the beach. Why is it? What is the posture of someone who's depressed, who feels powerless? They collapse. They feel defeated. They feel hopeless. Just look at animals, look at your dog. The dominant dog is up, its tail is wagging, power. The submissive dog is collapsed and shrinks. Humans are like that as well. We are mammals. And what happens is when I put my body in the position without knowing, putting my head forward, collapsing the shoulders as I'm mousing, for example, looking and concentrating on the screen, I, my body is now in a body position of defeat and collapse. And that changes our hormones. It changes the access of our thoughts. So in that body position, I have less access to hopeless, I have to positive thoughts or empowering, and, and if I'm up, I have more access to empowering thoughts. Well, I know you think, ah, but why don't we just do this as an exercise for a moment? 
I'll do it very quick. And you can have the experience. Just sit for a moment and let yourself collapse like downward, looking down. Just look down. You're in a slouch collapse position. If the eyes open or close, look down. The shoulders almost rounded forward. And now in this position, evoke and, and only hopeless, helpless, powerless, defeated memories, one after the other. Just evoke one after the other, hopeless, helpless, powerless memories. Just bring them up. Keep bringing them up. And now shift. Keep the same collapsed, defeated position. Now evoke only positive, optimistic, empowering memories. So now still collapsed, evoke only positive, empowering memories. Normally I do this much longer, but now sit way up. And just as Mayer said, look upward, look at the roof line, look at the trees, look up. And while looking up, evoke only hopeless, helpless, powerless memories. Keep looking up. And now stay the same position, looking up, evoke all positive, empowering, positive memories. I think that's enough. Ideally, you can do this for like 30 seconds each, so that the whole practice would take two minutes. But how many of you? X found that looking down when your body was collapsed, it was easier to get access to hopeless, helpless, negative memories than when sitting up. Yes? Just nod your head, yes or no? Great. If you're like our students or the hundreds of people we have done this practice with and we have published this, you can see that almost everyone, when they are in the downward position, it just easier to access the kind of defeated, hopeless memories. The reason is when we felt depressed, defeated, our bodies collapsed. And after a while, that is a very strong linkage. When we put the body in that position, it evokes those same past memories. And in the same way, when you're sitting up, it was possible to think of hopeless, helpless memories for many of you but somehow you may have been a bit more distant from it. You had a little less attachment to it. And it was slightly easier to have the positive memories. I'm always so impressed when this doing. And for those who have younger, well, for younger children who are struggling with math, for example, and we have done this a study at, at San Francisco State, we do the same study. You collapse, and then mentally subtract a number, let's say number seven from 124 sequentially backwards. So it's 124, you know, you know uh, 117, 110. And th that's in one position. And the other position is you sit up and do it. Almost everybody reports that when they're collapsed, it is just harder to do the math. And what is so interesting is the effect is the biggest for all those students who report beforehand that they have math anxiety, they're worried, they're stressed about performance. So if you are worried about performance, think you can't do something, then the body position amplifies that negativity and stops you, almost inhibits you from doing abstract thinking. We have a choice. And just like posture, it's critical. So the moment you collapse, stop. Okay, yes, I collapsed. You can acknowledge I collapsed because I'm tired. Well, maybe I should go outside and do movements. I collapsed. 
because I had depressive thoughts, hopeless thoughts. Ah, I need to learn to start observing and changing the thoughts. I collapsed because I needed to look at the screen. I couldn't quite see it. I may, I may need to have a larger screen, larger characters. I may need more visual breaks to rest my eyes so it's possible. Or I collapsed because I crossed my legs. <laughs> and when I cross my legs, automatically my spine goes as it curls and I start collapsing. There are many other practices and concepts. But to me, the posture is so critical. And how do you remind yourself to do this again? To take, so you've been sitting. So for a moment, you can do almost anything. Just roll your shoulders. It's not important. And Mayer has done many, many exercises of tapping your body. Remember, he can guide hundreds of these. So take a breath for a moment, sit. And let me do one little exercise for regeneration. What I'd like you to do is to put your hands on your abdomen, almost like your hands rest, literally rest in the groin so you can feel your lower stomach. And when you inhale, let the stomach get bigger. And then inhale through your nose. And then as you exhale, let the air flow out real slowly and feel the stomach getting slightly smaller. And keep breathing like that. Once. Good. Two. Now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take your right hand, put it on your left shoulder. And now when you inhale, let the air go into your abdomen like there's a big balloon there. And now when you exhale, stroke your arm down. I'm making a sound. As I exhale down my arm, as if I'm pushing the air down my left arm. And I repeat that again. Bring my arm to the left shoulder. Let my stomach get bigger. And then I exhale down my arm. One more time. And I almost squeeze quite hard on my shoulder, on my arm as I do this. Good. Now I take my left hand and put it on my right shoulder and I repeat the same motion. So I inhale, my stomach gets bigger. As I exhale, I stroke down. And almost really squeeze, so I really feel the pressure going all the way down my hand. And again, let the air come in and then very slowly, and one more time, And now I take both hands, put them in my hips, take a breath so my stomach becomes bigger. And now as I exhale, I bring my hands down my thighs, past my knees to my calves. And then when I get go up, I sit up, put my hands again, on my hips and on the next breath, I, my stomach is big. I exhale again, pushing the air down my legs and while I touch them. Great. And now with your eyes closed, sit back. Be sure you're sitting up. Lift your hands for a moment away from your thighs and let them just drop, plop. And now very gently with each breath, let the stomach get bigger as you inhale. And as you exhale, imagine the air going down your arms and out your hands. And on the next breath, imagine the air going down your legs and out your feet. And, if, and each time you do this, let the breath go slower and slower. And if your attention wanders, oh, I need to do this task. That's okay. Go right back to feeling and attending to where the air flows down your arms or legs.
and let the eyes be closed. And as you're sitting like this, imagine that the back of the head gets taller at the same time. As if the air can go to in through the top of your head. And then stream down your neck, down your arms, down your legs as you're exhaling. Great. We can do this much longer. How many know that you felt more relaxed? Just nod your head. How many could feel some tingling going down your arms? Some of you. How many found out that you're at it was easier to hold your attention for a moment and you had less distractions because you were sort of focusing on the flow going down your arms? So for our brain, if it's occupied, we often have less distractions for a little while. And I highly recommend this. Let me do one more concept. Ah, you see, this tells me you heard a noise, the click. That is my program popping up saying, do a movement or exercise. I don't care what it is. But for a moment, you know, you can, you can just dance back and forth. Ooh, ooh, just ah, get up. It's possible, Chris, get up. Get up. You can even, or you can just touch, you know, you can reach over and touch your legs. You alternate back and forth. Oh, do get up. Yes, uh, Fabrizio, get up too. It's easy. It's hard to do not do that. Okay, enough. And sit again. Note, if you check, Again, your energy goes up a little bit. You're slightly more awake. Now, why? What is the, re let me give one more explanation and experience what happens at the computer that contributes so much to fatigue and muscle tension. Something Mayer pointed out right at the beginning, we need to alternately do movement, etc. The reason is what you experienced when we did the mousing exercise that your muscle tension was held. You stiffened your body. And we, do, we don't realize that the muscles are slightly contracted the whole time. Muscles are designed to contract and to relax, to regenerate. Contract and to regenerate. While when we're working at the computer, whether we're holding the mouse and our index finger holding the mouse is just held up the whole time our shoulder is slightly tight and we're unaware of it, that leads to long-term harm. Let me give the subjective experience. So what I'd like you all to do as you're sitting is just lift your right knee about an inch, an inch up, two and a half centimeters. So that the feet are now lifted away from the floor. And just do this. You're just lifting the knee a little bit, nothing very much. The foot no longer is resting on the floor. You're lifting the whole leg up. And how many of you are already starting to feeling some discomfort? Not your head. I know, I could ask you, how long can you do this? That would probably depend how much I would pay you for doing it. <laughs> but I think this is probably long enough. Let it rest. And can you feel the area relaxing and letting go? You may almost feel an imaginary warmth flowing through that. Now, the, that muscle we just lifted, we used to lift the leg, are, is the same muscle we would use when we walk. So when Mayer goes to the beach and walks on the sand, he activates those same muscle to lift the leg forward. And I bet you Mayer can walk for miles doing this. But why can he do this? Because he tightens the muscle relaxes it, tightens it, relaxes it. And that's the concept we forget when we're working at the computer. It's the same concept for vision. When I'm looking at the screen, and here I, I borrow very generously, thank you, Mayor, from all your concepts. Uh, when I look at the screen, my eyes are converging. You all know that much better than me. My, I, I, my lens accommodates, it tightens to bulge your lens more. These muscles are held contracted. When muscles are held contracted, they cut the blood flow through that tissue by probably 
And if I do this long enough, I get into trouble. Except I don't know I do it. So Meyer's exercise really is go, do palming. Look outside just for a moment. Look at the far horizon to let the eyes diverge and the lens flatten. It allows more blood flow. And finally, when I work at the computer, because what is on the screen, the images are really the same for my brain as reality. When I watch a video, what I see on the screen for my body, it doesn't know it is a film. I, intellectually, I know it's a video or a film created in Hollywood or somewhere else, but my brain just says it's real. And we all know this because when most of us watch a horror movie, even though we know it's a horror movie, and then when we go outside and we hear some strange noises, we react much more than if we have watched a very tender movie. As if that tricked us. So our brain doesn't discriminate because for thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, the only thing that entered the eyes was, rea was our external reality. So we have no filter that says to our brain, what am I seeing here is not real. And so I react all the time. So let me do one practice of this to give that experience, which all of you know. What I'd like you to do is really look at the screen, really start concentrating very well with high intensity, like you're almost scared, really, you know, and almost gasp when you're doing, oh my God, is that real? Can I do this? Did I get the right entry to the number? Really do this. Do it more. And notice when you're doing that, you may be holding your breath or shallow breathe. Your eyes are open. You did not blink. You feel the coolness in the eyes. Now stop, relax. We do something like this all the time without knowing. When you observe people working at the computer, their blinking rate goes way down. Their breathing rate increases. It's almost like being in fear, even though you're not in fear. But we do that. And that is a cost that all adds up to Zoom fatigue or neck and shoulder pain. Now do the inverse. Now for a moment, close your eyes, make yourself tall, breathe lower, and observe the difference in two ways to open your eyes. Let your eyes be closed. And now in a moment, I'd like you to open your eyes as if you're surprised or scared and, and inhale or gasp at the same time. So if I did, did it, it would be like this. Notice I purposely gasp and open my eyes wide to see the world. I want to see the tigers all around me. You ready? Get set. Just do this. So your eyes are closed. And now you just gasp and open your eyes wide to look at the tigers. Don't miss any of them. And hold it there. Keep looking for them. Keep looking for them. And when you do that, you can feel your eyes almost getting drier. Now close your eyes again. Breathe easily, lower, as Mayor said, slower and slower upon the exhalation, breathe through your nose. And now this time, when you open your eyes, don't do that yet. I like you first to inhale in your abdomen, then let the airflow go out, beginning to go out and then very slowly open your eyes like you don't care what is visible. It's like having with soft eyes. So let's do that for a moment. So you inhale in your abdomen as the air flows out, midway for the outflow, very softly open your eyes, almost looking down like you don't care. And what you may notice when you do that, that you can almost feel lacrimal, almost a tear and a slight increase in moisture and you're relaxing the eyes. So that's a very important thing. Um, right. Two things that uh, our friend Eric was saying is, first of all, the bending of the head is very difficult for the eyes, but I would want to give you some value. Every centimeter that the head bends is 10 times harder for the neck uh, and the chest than the centimeter before, because you have to tighten the muscles which are in front. And in order to protect yourself and not to fall, you have to tighten the muscles in the back. I'll never forget that I saw one uh, person with 
uh, limb girdle muscular dystrophy, which means you had dystrophy, especially in the hips and in the shoulders. He looks straight, he walks straight, but if you ask him to bend, he would fall because he didn't have the muscles to get him to stand up. So all of us can freeze ourselves. We can bend this way, but what happens is then the muscle, uh, other muscles will pull us back. So we are not aware of how much tension we put on ourselves. The other thing that sitting is so hard on the back. Uh, it's much easier for the back to walk and to, uh, and to stand than to sit. And we're sitting all the time right now. I can tell you that it's so hard to relax yourself after the transatlantic uh, flight because the body becomes so stiff from sitting. I always take um, an aisle and sit and I walk a lot in the plane. Even when they say, don't loiter and don't stand uh, near uh, the kitchen, I always do it. I always stretch all I can. And uh, it's, it, everything affects everything. For example, in the neck, we have a very important ligament called the nuche ligament. This is such an important ligament because if you put a plate over your head, it will not fall because the nuche ligament will hold the neck very much loose and your muscles will not tighten. Now, it connects, in my opinion, I'm saying my opinion, to the suspensory ligament of the lens. So if you look far at a distance, the suspensory, uh, suspensory ligament stretches the lens, the muscles of the lens relax. And at the same time, the nuche ligament works. And all your muscles are even. But the very fact that we look so much from near, and then with radiation, gets the neck to be stiff. Now, if you ask me, why do people have most blinding conditions today? That's because of stiff neck and stiff middle back. Lesser than that, much lesser than that, is the fact that so many people have dry eyes and overly wet eyes. Again, that comes because of stiff chest and stiff neck. And that's why walking backwards and running backwards is one of the best things that people can do. <laughs> I'm running on my parking stick, yeah. One of the best things that people can do in a very mild way, it creates a nice traction to your uh, to your back and neck. So for that reason, uh, I think that this lecture was really in a very good place in that it talked to you about how your tension accumulates. You know, people come to me and say, oops, I was always okay. Now I went to the doctor and I have stiff neck, I can't move. Or I have glaucoma or I have wet macular degeneration. We have to start in our daily practice. What we eat makes a difference. I must say I am a bit critical of how much I love ice cream, you know, but what we eat makes a very big difference. And also how we sit make a difference. So I would say that you have to get out of your chair every 20 minutes and stretch yourself Yay. like this. And stretch the, the the uh, middle back this way and stretch the middle back this way. And so it's so important for me to tell you all that this practice is so important. I mean, what I like about biofeedback and uh, Eric, are you, have you been the dean of the biofeedback college or? Uh, well, I, I teach it and I run a practice and uh, I've taught it for many years and the biofeedback makes it believable for people. That's why also you and I, and you do this all the time. You always, you give superb awareness exercises that makes the invisible, the unfelt felt, the invisible visible. And biofeedback uses technology to do the same. Well, so at least shows you, it doesn't tell you how to use it, but it can, and it can show you're misusing yourself and you're unaware of it and so useful. It gives you tools to improve your health. So I think that's what's important is to know that tension in and tension out makes a very, very big difference. So I understand that our friend Eric will have to leave in a couple of minutes. I just wanted to make an announcement before all of you are leaving and I'll be available for questions. Um, and this is uh, one thing that I want to say is that I want to have free classes 
and I will ask Rosando and some other people at the school to start and collect all the names of the people who want free classes. And the next class is not going to be on vision, although it will affect our vision, exactly what um, Eric was talking about, the fact that our uh, calf and specifically uh, the gastrocnemius and the soleus muscles a soleus is considered to be the second heart because it pushes all the blood up from the calf. Well, we're going to work on toes and calves and somewhat on fingers. So uh, I'll be open to questions also about vision, although the first class is going to be on building up our base. Awareness is your tool for greater health, not simply measuring your blood pressure right. and seeing that everything is not bad, trying to find if everything is okay and actually works better. Most of us overuse the calf muscles and underuse the shin muscles, so the uh, tibialis anterior. So we're gonna work on that. So the first half hour, I'm giving you a free lecture. We're a nonprofit, so we do things for free. And uh, I'm very grateful to Eric for giving his time now. And uh, I'll be half an hour available for people. So I want a vote. Who of you wants to come? And then which is the best day for you? I'm going to uh, set my schedule aside for that reason. Monday, Tuesday. Before Wednesday. you do that, Mayor, I'm sorry. I have to go to another meeting. I want to really thank you so much for the invitation. I want to remind everybody for more concepts, do look at our new book that is just coming out this Monday. So I feel very happy about it. And Mayor, that's called Tech Stress, How Technology is Hijacking Our Lives, Strategies for Coping and Pragmatic Ergonomics. I think it's really useful for each of us and our friends. And finally, Mayor, if people like it, I would be available for Q&A. We please set up another, if it's appropriate, set up another time and we can do it together as a Q&A. Uh, I just have to go. I apologize. I need to go. I have another university okay. meeting. Thank okay. you so much for the opportunity to share. Thank you. Well, Bye-bye. Thank you for coming. So this is Eric's book. I want you all to see the book and you can purchase it in Amazon or elsewhere. Okay. So I just want to say that just like we talk about heaviness of neck, we can also talk about heavy, heaviness of the eyelids. And I'll just finish with a nice little exercise. And this is uh, all of you, massage, if you can stand up and massage your eyelids very gently from up to down, from up to down, and stretch them and massage your eyebrows. Start by putting pressure on the uh, bridge of the nose and then outwards, put pressure on the nose and go outwards. And um, I'm so happy that we have so many wonderful vision practitioners here and body workers. Uh, as a part of our group. And I'm open for questions and answers for the next few minutes. Oh, Q&A, cool. All right, with that being said, um, please make sure you guys use the, the raise hand feature and we will get started with the questions. I see that Monir is already raising his hand. So let me go ahead and, well, oh, actually, let me go ahead and um, fix something here. Okay, so uh, Monir, your your microphone's not on, so I, I, we can't ask we can't answer your question. But if anybody else has a question, please uh, go ahead and raise your hand. We will unmute you, Chris. All right, there you go. Chris. Hi, man. Hi, man. Nice to see you. I recently went and had an eye eye exam. And the, the numbers that came back were 1.5 and 1.75. Um, so I assume that's the diopters of myopia that I, that I currently experience. And I was just wondering where you would recommend that I start with my uh, eye work to improve it. Well, uh, I'm happy that you're gonna start with eye work. And the first thing that you wanna work is looking at details and details that are easy for you to see, and then smaller details from near, which are harder for you to, to see, and then look at medium distance, at details, uh, and use an instrument that we have in our book, I don't have it right in front of me, which is called shifter. 
And I do have it in front of me. Um, and what you do is uh, you look, uh, you shift from line to line on this. And that way you look at the world. So look at the clouds, look at um, the sky. And let me ask you a question, Chris. Do you look a lot, a lot of the computer, at the computer these days? Yes, yes. So you need to take many breaks from the computer. It's not impossible that if you did not look at a computer for a few days and then measured your eyes that your correction would have been half a diopter less or a diopter less. So first of all, look at the distance, take many trips out. Uh, one of the worst things that happens these days is we become really lonely and our friend is the computer. And that's not a good friend to our eyes or to our posture as Eric was talking about. So taking walks, you look like a young, strong man. So taking walks, looking at the clouds, discovering which eye of yours is weaker and, and covering the eye that is stronger and working with it. So um, we have glasses like this. For example, my right eye is stronger, so I'm covering it, right? But if your left eye is stronger, that's what you cover. And looking at details, uh, looking from line to line, you can use the clouds as a shifter and shift from cloud to cloud and from area of the sky to the other area of the sky. Okay, good. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Um, this real quick. Okay, Monir, go ahead and uh, unmute yourself and ask a question, sir. Okay. Hi, Mir. Uh, so I just want to tell you, I just got your palmix stick. Here you can see it. And it is really amazing. I'm in Canada and I got two of them, uh, one for me and one for my mom. And Wonderful. Uh, they're really awesome. Wonderful. Uh, Thank you. Yes, yes. I encourage I have five at my home. <laughs> I have five palming stick at home, and I'm so, I glad, I, yeah. I'm so glad you got it because I forgot to sign the custom form. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got it. I was so excited. And actually, I had it now for like a week. And, uh, you know, from the time I was really struggling with this palming, and I'm doing it now actually for over an hour a day, which is really amazing. I'm just looking forward to do a little bit after this meeting, actually. So if anybody hasn't have it, I hasn't have it yet, I would really encourage everybody to get one at least. Thank so you. my question for you. That's so simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. And uh, my question, actually, a couple of questions. The first one is, if there's one exercise that you would recommend for releasing the eye stress from the computer, would it be palming or would it be far looking? It, or should it, we could be, it could be either one of them. I think far looking is more important and peripheral work would be more important, you know, to put the uh, different, we don't have here all of them for some reason, but to put the different size paper uh, uh, in front of the eyes and to wave the hands uh, sideways. Ah, we have several here. Yeah, so it has to be a small paper, mid medium paper, and long paper. So to put paper like this, this is medium. We have a smaller paper than this, but it's not in front of, in front of me, but let's call it this. Small paper between the eyes, medium paper between the eyes, and then uh, uh, long paper, and then longer paper, and wave your hand to the side. And Munir, you have to do it at least once a day, but the small paper do several times a day. So you take away the stress of looking at a computer. And as you look at a computer, from time to time, wave your hands sideways. It's hard for me to compete with this thing on the screen, but wave your hands sideways. They see and, you. They see yeah. yeah, as you wave your hands sideways, you take away a lot of the stress that you have looking at a computer. Also, from time to time, if you can do it and be sports about it, you cover the bridge of the nose of your a stronger eye, you wave your hand to the side and you look with the weaker eye at the computer. If it's not such an important text and you can just look at details on the screen, then take it off and then read with both eyes. Those are real good exercise for you to not let the computer ruin your eyes. Great, the other question, uh, Mir, I don't know if uh, that's really uh, relevant, but during the palming, uh, because I'm doing really a long per period of palming, if there's a noise in the house or something like that, I'm putting different uh, waves, uh, what you call it, on the, you know, uh, with the headphones. So I was experimenting with delta waves, theta waves, 
do you have any preference of what kind of uh, you know things we should listen to during the polling or or it doesn't matter um i think that's a better question for eric than for me but i would say that i personally don't like earphones because i don't like anything to crowd our ear so what i would do if i were you is put music in your room when there is noise in the house great that's my answer. great advice yeah. thank you another question let's ask uh, diana can you please uh, mute yourself and ask your question diana yes i'm here can you hear me yes ah hello my nice to meet you again um going back to the posture uh i remember last uh session of myopia you told me to get a a massage on my neck. I remember that well. And now I'm really aware of sitting tall, but yet I have this tendency to do this with my neck. I, 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 I've always had a, a stiff neck and I don't know what to do really to pay more attention, to be more aware uh, that my neck is like this all the time. I don't know really what I've been doing exercises, but I don't know what to, what to, to do really. Well, well what's happened is you develop real stress in the front of your body, uh -huh. or the back of your body. And you have to pass through a period of time when you sense more the back of the body. So uh, for example, uh, if uh, everyone is willing to lie on the floor for a minute, I'll show you an exercise. Are you willing to lie on the floor? Yeah, of course. Okay, so let's all of us lie on the floor. I'll put the yoga mat here. Yeah. And all I want you to do, if you need a pillow, put a pillow in case you're uncomfortable. But all I want you to do is to lie on the floor and first of all, rest on the floor because we were sitting a lot. Mm -hmm. And then don't use your abdominal area, but put pressure on the lower back. Just the lower back. Okay. Relax. Now put pressure just with the left side of your lower back and relax. Right side of the lower back and relax. Middle side and relax. Now put your hands in the middle of your chest and put pressure on the left side of the chest. Relax, right side of the chest, relax, middle, relax. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, try to see if you can feel it and not use your lower back or your abdomen. That's a tough one. And then feel the area between the shoulders. Put pressure there and relax, put pressure. And then what you can do is roll from side to side for a moment. Mm -hmm and do exactly the same thing again. Let yourself collapse, feel the lower back, the left side, mm -hmm. pressure, relax. The right side with pressure, relax the middle. Now the left side of the middle back, right side of the middle back with pressure, then between the shoulders and then sit up. And you turn around to sit up and then when you sit up, move in rotating motion this way, and then the opposite way, move in rotating motion. So in fact, this is what I actually wanted to talk to you about. I do not use your arms to stand up if you can. <laughs> ah. What I wanted to say is that you have overly developed the front of the body, your chest and your abdomen. And in fact, in physical education, they tell us to do it. Overuse your abdomen, tense it for everything else. Even in most gymnasiums that say, do that. And they're really causing us arthritis. And uh, we need to develop specifically our back muscles, mm -hmm. tense the back. And so many people have a stoop posture for many different reasons, but the computer is definitely one of them. That's mm -hmm. why I was talking about walking backwards. And that's why I'm talking about starting to feel the back. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Maya.
You're welcome. Okay, and this is, I think, the last question. Nobody else is asking a question. Mary White, please unmute yourself and ask your question, ma'am. Where is she at? Okay. So I just want to announce once more before. Yeah, I, I, hold on. You know, I unmuted and then it, it didn't unmute. I wanted to thank you for the class. It's been really helpful. And there are a lot of people who can't attend in real time. I was wondering, is it possible to make the classes available like after? So uh, the people I tell about, I can tell someone there's this wonderful class from my teacher, Mayor Schneider, and here's how you can access it. Because I noticed a lot of people in the chat for giving different times, we're from all over the world. So I'm, I think we should do the classes regularly. They're very helpful. So you're, you you're, saying, you're saying something very important. First of all, this one will always be free on YouTube. Yes, this video and, will be free uh, completely on YouTube and it'll be uploaded very, very soon, probably by tomorrow. Okay, and, and Rosanda will, will upload it. So that's gonna be free. The class on myopia will only be free until sometimes next week. And then what? Today's the last day of myopia. Ah, sorry, today's the last day of myopia. Okay. Uh, so then people can buy it. It's $25 to buy it. Um, the class on cataract is already available for $25, mm -hmm. but this one will be free. But what I'm announcing is that I want to give free classes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the time is correct, like now around 12 o'clock uh, Pacific time. <laughs> and it's gonna be 12 to one. And I want to get feedback of what is a good day. I'm gonna go by the majority vote. And so- yeah, that's what I'm saying is I've heard, I've seen all sorts of days and times in the chat. Some people are saying, you know, I could come, but it depends on the time. Some people say I'm in Brazil or this. So that's what I was saying. If you want to do a regular free class. But, but those will be regularly on YouTube. We're not going to charge for them on YouTube or here. Okay. So the good thing about being in the class is that people ask me questions. And Correct, and that's why I want people to know about it. So even if they can't come, if it's an issue for them, they can go and watch and hear the questions and your responses. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly mm -hmm. what's gonna happen. So okay. thank you all for coming here. I know that um, we didn't have as many people as we had in the last two classes. The topics were a bit different. I still think it was important to listen to, doc to Dr. and Professor Eric Pepper. He had uh, a lot of things to share with us. And I was happy to uh, uh, teach only partially this class. I hope you all enjoy the palming with, uh, with Mozart. Huh? And next time, remember, I want you to, um, uh, to prepare a situation where you can have two tennis balls and when you can sit on a chair or on a ball, I prefer a ball uh, like this. If, if you have it, you know, sit on a chair on a ball or on the floor. And we're gonna start by working on our feet and toes. Very important. So uh, tell us when we have much more open schedule than I ever had in my life <laughs> with the Corona. So tell us when and wherever we get a larger number of people, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, we will have the class where I teach for half an hour and answer questions right after that. Thank you very much.